You're listening to More Than a Song, episode 184. Hello, and welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture, hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio, to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. We're talking about salvation this week, inspired by Selah's song, I Got Saved. I can't wait to dive into scripture, but first, let's listen. I've received nothing but goodness. I've tested and tasted your grace. I was so lost till I fell at the cross and got saved. excited about our conversation this week. However, I don't think I'll even be able to scratch the surface. I hope I can inspire you, however, to think deeply or more deeply about salvation and to maybe pick up your own shovel and dig into scripture yourself this week. Uh, I remember reading a statement about being saved in the introduction of a book that I read long ago. It's one of those times where The statement just kind of stuck in my brain. So I pulled out the book this week. It's by Kyle Strobel. And he asks the question in the introduction, what was I saved from? It seemed to me I was saved from God by God. I failed to see I was saved by God for God. Wow, that phrase has stru- has stuck with me over all of these years. And rather than thinking we're saved from God by God, let's begin to understand that we really are saved by God for God. Now, there are so many places that we could go in scripture that talk about salvation, but I ended up in the book of Romans this week. And as I sat down to jot out my thoughts, I picked up a resource I have on the stories behind some of the old hymns, because our song this week starts out with the lyrics, there's a river of gladness that pours from Emmanuel's veins. This sinner was plunged beneath the flood and I got saved. This is reminiscent of the phrasing in the old hymn, There is a fountain, and it was written by William Cowper in 1772. And as the story goes, William Cowper ends up in an insane insane asylum for over a year. He had this mental breakdown. He attempted suicide. And for 18 months, he was in the asylum. And while he was in the hospital, he develops a personal relationship with Christ through the reading of his Bible. And specifically, the story mentions Romans chapter 3, verse 25. It says, For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. So it looks like William Cowper and I had the same idea. So let's head over to the book of Romans. Now, Paul hits it right out of the gate in the introduction to his letter to the Romans. He doesn't waste any time. He writes, this letter is from Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line, and he was shown to be the son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. 
Now, we spoke about the good news a few episodes ago when we used the song The Gospel by Ryan Stevenson. Here it is again, though. And, I, the, you know, we can talk about it every episode and we would still not completely get to the bottom of it. But let's kind of go back and use our Bible interaction tool exercise of asking questions. Now, I introduce Bites to you um, every week. These are just little habits that I use to... Uh, it kind of sounds cheesy, but take a bite out of scripture. These are, um, you know, you don't have to go have some sort of college degree to use these little habits that will help you as you sit down and, and study scripture for yourself. So I'm going to ask some questions. Who is Paul? Well, let's go back to what we just read. He was chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach God's good news. When was this good news promised? Well, long ago, through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Ah, great reason, by the way, to study these Holy Scriptures. They point to Jesus, which is, uh, it's, it's one of those amazing things when you begin to make the link between the Old Testament and the New Testament and see that every story, every story is pointing to Christ. So this good news was promised long ago. What is this good news about? Well, it's about God's Son. What is the significance of God's son? Well, he was significant in his earthly life as he was born into a kingly line. He was born into King David's family line. He was significant in his eternal life with God because when he was raised from the dead through the power of the Holy Spirit, that proved that he was God's son. Now, who is he? Ah, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And what is Paul's privilege and authority? Well, his privilege and authority is to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them. Why? Why? What's the result that Paul's looking for? So that they will believe and obey God. To what end? Bringing glory to God's name. Now, remember what we said earlier. We are not saved from God by God, but rather we are saved by God for for God. You know, it's right there to bring glory to his name. Now, the introduction continues in verse six, and it says, and you are included among those Gentiles who've been called to belong to Jesus Christ. I'm writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. May God, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Now, Paul specifically wrote this letter to all who are in Rome, and you will see as you read it that it addresses Jews and Gentiles. Now, we, by the way, are Gentiles. Unless you're Jewish by national descent, you are considered in Scripture a Gentile. But just like the Romans, who this letter was originally written to, we're Gentiles, and we are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. And so the foundation of all of this is the gospel message, the good news. And Paul is not ashamed of the gospel. Want to know why? Well, in verse 16, he says, I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news, this gospel tells us how God makes us right in his sight This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. And as the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Okay, so why is he not ashamed of the gospel? It's powerful. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. Now, I know sometimes Christians use words that seem super foreign to outsiders, quote unquote, outsiders. Okay. Now I live in Louisiana and I have for over 20 years now, but I grew up in Idaho. And so I was an outsider when I got here and I did not understand some of the lingo. I remember one time on a date, my boyfriend asked if I wanted to get down and I I, immediately, this vision of John Travolta and Saturday night fever popped into my head, but really he just wanted to know if I wanted to get out of the car. So for those of you who visit Louisiana, if somebody asks if you want to get down, that means that they're really asking if you want to get out of the car. And uh, I think another time someone told me, asked me to come see. And so when I went over there, I was like, what am I looking at? And but come see down here means come over here. <laughs> so you may or may not actually be seeing anything when they say that. 
So, um, but we're talking about being saved and we know, oh, speaking of saved, there's another, you know, when I first started dating my husband, Ron, my future mother-in-law at the time asked me if I wanted to help her save the dishes to which I replied, well, I wasn't going to throw them away. Well, come to find out saving the dishes in Cajun country means putting them away. Lesson learned. (laughs) Okay. So somewhere along the way, someone may ask you, are you saved? Or maybe you've asked somebody, are you saved? Your testimony of, of how you came to saving faith in Christ may include the words, I got saved when. Our song declares it. I got saved. Now, so I'm just telling you that this is an explanation. If you are still, quote unquote, an outsider, or maybe you're new to this whole Christianity thing, just know that these words come from Scripture. We're talking about, it, it says the saving faith. It says salvation. It says saved. This is not some made up word that's not really in Scripture. It's here, and we're going to go over it some more today. But don't forget, we are saved by God for God. But God is holy and he needs to save us to use us. So we keep going down in verse 17. This good news, this gospel tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. So our salvation is initiated by God and is accomplished through faith. Okay, now the chapter then turns to God's view of wickedness and sin. It's very descriptive. I don't have time to read it to you today, but I want you to read it on your own. It can sure tell you why we need salvation. It's a pretty clear description of why we need saving in the first place. It describes just what we can be saved from. So you're going to read this detailed list of wickedness in chapter two, I'm sorry, in in chapter one, and uh, you might start feeling pretty good about yourself. And you're going to say, because at least I'm not like that, (laughs) you know, but then you're going to turn the page to chapter two. And Paul starts out that that chapter basically saying, hey, don't be so smug. You are just as bad. So don't forget, though, salvation is initiated by God. He has made a way for us to be made right with him. We do have to come to terms with how wicked our sin is. That's not really where I'm going to stay in today's podcast, but maybe we'll be able to pick it up using another song in the future. But uh, we, we do need saving. We need, there are things, there's wickedness, there's sin. We need to be made right with God and we cannot do it on our own, but he's made a way. So Romans chapter three, verse 22, we are made right with God. How? By placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. That's what it says. This is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Now, here's the part I want to get to this week. This song is such a joyful expression of praise for our salvation. And I love that they sing, I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I just love that word undone where we're just, there's, it's just comes with that feeling of completely falling apart. I'm just undone. It undoes me. This, the idea that God could love us and have such great mercy and goodness. And it goes on to say, I'm restored and made right. All right. I'm restored and made right. In Romans 5, 1, Paul writes. So we're, we're chugging along through Romans. We've made it through ver- uh, chapters one and two and three. I've kind of highlighted a few things through all of those. In, ver- in 5, verse one, Paul writes, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have already figured out how to be made right right? So we've been made right in God's sight by faith. Remember, we're saved by grace through faith. Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, uh, by the way, I just have to stop here for a second. We've not been made right in God's sight through some sort of special prayer. We have not been made right in God's sight through walking down an aisle. We have not been made right in God's sight through our efforts to be good and our own efforts to overcome sin. Although you may have said a prayer verbally affirming your faith, 
You may have walked down an aisle at a church to celebrate your faith with the community of believers. You may have the desire to turn from your wicked ways because of your faith. And all of these things are good, but we are not made right by those things. We are made right in God's sight by faith. So these are often common indicators of faith, but you can do these things without faith. By the way, you can walk down the aisle without faith. You can say some words, a special prayer without faith. You can even try to be good and overcome sin on your own without faith. But you will not be made right in God's sight without faith. We are saved by grace through faith. Remember, I said it was initiated by God. Even our faith was a gift from God to us, from God. We don't even have to come up with that on our own. He is so gracious. And we talked about that a few episodes ago. So now we, again, we're since uh, verse one, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord has done for us. Oh my goodness. Wow. We have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. This holy, righteous, all powerful God who is so unbelievable, unbelievably hostile to sin. He hates sin. That wall of hostility has been broken down in Christ and we have peace peace with God. Paul goes on. It's so poetic. He says, because of our faith in verse two, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Did you know that you are standing in a place of undeserved privilege when we stand before him saved? Yes. And we can have confidence and that should result in joy and joyful expectation to a forever life with him. Now, I love this section of Romans because it expressed the joy that our song expresses this week about being saved. And we are going to get to the most beautiful part, but tucked in between this peace and confidence and joy that Paul tells us that we can have um, tucked right between that is uh, the idea that we can run into problems, too. Wait, what? (laughs) I mean, I thought we had joy and confidence and hope. And of course we do. It kind of seems out of place. In fact, I was tempted to even skip over these three verses just to get to the good stuff. And then I realized this is a picture of you. I've heard from some of you that are really struggling. You're fighting disease and physical disability. You're struggling against the loss of loved ones or the loss of marriages. You have so many questions for the Lord and are so desperate for his hand. And all I can say is, just listen. This is not me. This is, this is Father God through his servant Paul speaking to you when he says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Endurance develops strength of character, which just strengthens our confident hope of salvation. This place you're in, it is not to weaken your faith. It's to strengthen it. The hope of your salvation will not lead to disappointment. Why? Because we know how dearly God loves us. How can we know? Because the Holy Spirit confirms it as he fills our hearts with his love. Now, we can't stop reading or else we're going to miss the best part. Verse 6, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people not being willing to die would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who's especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we've been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. We can rejoice. Oh, yes, let's rejoice as we are saved through the life of his son. Let's rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. We are restored 
to the relationship God had intended from the beginning. We've got Jesus. How could we want more? So what's next? Sometimes I get stuck in Romans. You know, it can tend to be, it's a little longer. It's a little bit more difficult to read than some of the other letters. It can, it can be a little bit more complex. I get bogged down in the details sometimes. So this week I use the Bible interaction tool exercise of listening to an audio version of Romans 1 through 5. I listened in the New Living Translation and I listened with my ear, leaned in toward anything that would help me understand salvation. So when you listen to something maybe you've heard before with a specific topic in mind, it's not that you're ignoring the rest of scripture, but some of the complexities tend to fade into the background as you gain clarity on a specific objective. Now, I understood this uh, section of scripture in a way I've never really heard before. So I encourage you to try it again. Read or listen to Romans 1 through 5 and listen and be attentive to any details that will help you understand what Paul is teaching about salvation. And by all means, keep reading if you can, because then you're going to discover wonderful gems further on down. Romans chapter 10. I can't can't leave without saying this one. Verses 9 through 10. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. While you're in God's word this week, let me know how you're doing. You can email me, michelle at michellekneezat.com. Hop on Twitter at michellekneezat or Facebook, Michelle L. Nizat is my public page. Let's talk about what you're learning. And before I tell you what song will be featured next week, I want to thank the premier Christian music streaming service, theoverflow.com, for pointing their subscribers to this podcast. But more importantly, pointing them to God's word through music. Now, when you subscribe to their trial, you will receive a 10-day series of devotions I wrote based on some of my most popular podcast episodes. So I encourage you to check them out at theoverflow.com. I also want to thank my newest subscribers to my website, like Jill from Florida, Vaughn from Texas, Pam from New York, Esther from Kenya, Christy from Louisiana, Zandria from Australia, Addison from Mississippi, Barb from Nebraska, Janie from Ohio, and Brenda from Alabama. Welcome. Now, new subscribers to my website benefit from an email that I send out once a week. And in that email, you get a weekly memory verse resource to display on your smartphone, tablet, desktop, or you can print it out. You get an email recap of the week's episode, and you get instant access to any of the resources that I create for my episodes from time to time. It's just my way of saying thank you for listening. So head over to michellekneezat.com to subscribe today. Now, don't miss an episode of my podcast. You can subscribe directly in iTunes. And while you're there, would you leave me a written review and a star rating? This really encourages me, but it also helps me stay visible to new listeners. And as always, if you take the time to review my podcast, I will take the time to personally thank you right here on the podcast. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. Next week, I will be using Oh Come to the Altar by Elevation Worship to jump into scripture. If you liked this episode, however, would you mind sharing it with others? I've made it really easy. With just one click, you can share via Facebook, Twitter, or email. Just head over to michellekneezat.com forward slash 184. And while you're there, I'd love to hear from you. Click on comment to join the conversation. Until next time, take time to meditate on God's word and consider his ways.